How's it going everyone? This video is going to be about the diagonalization of a matrix. Particularly how to diagonalize a matrix, we'll be using a 2x2 two two matrix as an example. So to do this, you want to be comfortable with doing matrix multiplication, with finding the inverse of a matrix, and finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, so what is the diagonalization of a matrix? Let's say you have some matrix A. Well, to diagonalize it would be to find matrices S, matrix D, and matrix S to the power of negative 1, such that A is equal to S, D, and then S inverse, where D is a diagonal matrix. So D is a matrix of the form where we have some values along the diagonal, say if it's a 4 by 4 matrix, A, B, C, D, and everything else is a zero. Okay, so that's a diagonal matrix. We want to find some matrix D and then another matrix S such that A equals S, D, and S inverse. Okay, so what would be the benefit of that? Okay, well, if we have a diagonal matrix, okay, so let's say D equals um, 3, 2, 0, 0, right? and we do d to the power of something, right? Let's say d to the power of 100. Well, that's just going to be 3 to the power of 100, 0, 0, 2 to the power of 100. Okay, it's, it's very easy to bring a diagonal matrix to the exponent of something, okay? And if we have a diagonal matrix surrounded by another matrix and its inverse, so d s s inverse well let's say we bring that to the power of 100 what is that going to be okay well we're going to have s d s inverse and then another s d s inverse and then another s d s inverse and so on right to the very end s d s inverse s d S inverse okay and so how many of these these sets of multiplying s by d by s inverse do we have well we have a hundred of them okay but look what happens in the middle okay so here we have s inverse times s that's just going to be the identity matrix another s inverse times s identity matrix and that'll continue throughout, like this, this S inverse is going to connect to an S, this S is going to connect to an S inverse. Here again we have S inverse times S. So these identity matrix are not going to do anything to our, our uh, multiplication, because what we'll end up in the middle there is the D, S, S inverse, then another D which is going to be D times the identity matrix times D, which is just going to be D times D, okay? So what we'll have as a result is S, D to the power of 100, and then S inverse. And because D is a diagonal matrix, raising it to the power of 100, or to any power, is, is rather simple to do, right? So if we know that A equals S, D, S inverse, well then we can do A to the power of 100 quite easily. That's just going to be S multiplied by D to the power of 100 multiplied by S inverse, okay? Which are, which are easy calculations to do, again, because D is a diagonal matrix, right? So if we can find matrices S and D such that a is equal to SDS inverse, that, well, that's very convenient, right? So the question is, how do we find them, okay? And the first thing we have to do is we have to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A, okay? So let's do an example, okay? Let's say A is equal to 1, 2, 4, and 3, Okay, and, and we want to find its, uh, its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So we want to solve the equation AV equals lambda, which is some constant, multiplied by V, right? And V is a vector here. 
So we want to solve this, so a v minus lambda v is equal to zero. Okay, a v minus the identity matrix lambda v is equal to zero. Of course, that identity matrix isn't going to change any of our values. So we can factor out the v a minus i lambda multiplied by v is equal to zero. And we want solutions other than v equals zero, right? Of course, if v equals zero, that's going to that's gonna solve this equation here. But we don't want that trivial solution. We want some other solution other than the trivial one, OK? And if non-trivial solutions exist to this equation, well, that means that the determinant of a minus i lambda, well, that determinant must equal to zero, right? So we want to find the determinant, right? So if we recall what a is equal to, one, two, four, three, okay, minus the identity matrix times lambda, okay, we want the determinant of all of that, and then we're going to set that equal to zero, okay? So that's going to be the determinant of 1 minus lambda, 2, 4, 3 minus lambda. We're just subtracting lambda from the diagonal components. Okay, so 1 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda minus 4 times 2. That is going to give us... 3 minus 3 lambda minus lambda plus lambda squared minus 8. We can rearrange that as lambda squared minus 4 lambda minus 5. And we can factor that as... Uh, lambda minus 5 and lambda plus 1. Okay, so that's two numbers that multiply to negative 5 and add up to negative 4, right? Negative 5 and plus 1. And if we set that equal to 0, right, well then we have two solutions. Lambda can equal negative 1 or lambda can equal positive 5, right? So these are our two eigenvalues, okay? And now we want to know what eigenvectors correspond to these eigenvalues, right? So these are the values that will that will solve our equation up here. A V equals lambda V, right? And we want to know what vectors correspond to those values for lambda, right? So we're just going to plug in lambda into this equation here and solve it, right? So let's start with lambda equals negative 1, right? All right, so we have 1 minus lambda, 2, 4, 3 minus lambda. That equals 1 minus negative 1, so that's a 2. This stays a 2. This stays a 4. 3 minus negative 1. Well, that's also a four, right? And so we're solving, you know, that being equal to zero, right? So we can write it as an augmented matrix, but often when, when the augmented side of the augmented matrix is just a bunch of zeros, we, we ignore that column and we can just write it without that, that column of zeros there. Okay, so, so solving for this, this is congruent to the uh, the matrix one one zero zero, right? So we can just uh, divide the top row by two, divide the bottom row by four, and then subtract the top row from the bottom row, and that's what we get, right? And so we have v one plus v two equals zero. So we have v one 
equals negative v2, and then we can set v2 equal to some constant, okay? And that means that negative v2 is just negative that constant, right? So our vector phi, v1, v2, well, that's just equal to some constant multiplied by one, negative one, okay? So this here is our eigenvector, right? Negative one, one, and if we multiply it by any constant, well, we also have a vector that'll correspond to that eigenvalue, negative one. It's just a linear combination of our vector negative one, one here. Okay, so now let's work with the eigenvalue five, right? So we have, again, one minus lambda, two, four, three minus lambda, okay? That's, that's our a minus i lambda, right? Just like, just like we did right here, right? a minus i lambda, except instead of negative one, our lambda is equal to five, right? So we have one minus five is negative four, that stays a two, this is a four, three minus five is negative two. Okay, so this matrix here, okay, we can add the, uh, the top row to the bottom row, so we have negative four, two, zero, zero, and then we can divide that top row by two, so we have negative two, one, zero, zero. And so what we get here is negative two V1 plus V2 equals zero, right? So rearranging that, negative two V1 equals negative V2. And from that we get V1 equals one half of V2, right? And then V2 we can set equal to some constant, which means that V1 is just that same constant multiplied by one half, right? So our vector V would be in the form of some constant multiplied by one over two and one, okay? So any multiple of the vector one half and one will correspond to the eigenvalue five and we'll solve this equation, AV equals lambda V, right? If our eigenvalue lambda is five and our vector is, is of this form, some constant times one half multiplied by one. Okay, so we have our two eigenvectors that correspond to our two eigenvalues. And so we can create our matrix S, right? Which is going to be equal to the two vectors side by side, right? So our first eigenvector was negative one, one, and our other eigenvector was one half and one, all right? Our vector D, or sorry, our matrix D, is going to be the corresponding eigenvalues, right? So the first, eigenvector we used, oops, corresponded to the eigenvalue negative one. And the second column in S, the second eigenvector we used, corresponded to the eigenvalue five. So that's our diagonal matrix right there, okay? So we have S, we have D, and we can claim that A equals S, D, S inverse. Okay, and we'll check that, okay? Always good to, to check the answer, and it, it looks nice and elegant as well. Okay, so we recall that A equals one, two, four, and three. Okay, and S, D, S will equal, or S, D, S inverse, right, will equal negative one, one over two, one, one, multiplied by negative one zero zero five multiplied by s inverse so of course we have to find s inverse 
Okay, so let's do that. Right. So different ways you can find the inverse of a matrix. One way of doing that is creating an augmented matrix where the other side is the identity matrix and bringing that to bringing the left side to reduced row echelon form. Okay, so let's, uh, let's multiply the top row by negative one, right? So we have one, negative one over two, one, one, negative one, zero, zero, one. Okay, now let's subtract the top row from the bottom row. So this part stays the same. And here we have zero, one minus negative a half, it's actually three halves. Okay, zero minus negative one, it's going to be a one. One minus zero is a one. Okay, now let's multiply the bottom row by two over three okay, to get a one where we want it. So on top we, we have the same thing. On the bottom, this will stay a zero, this will become a one, and then we have two over three, two over three. Okay. Next step is let's do row one plus half of row two, right? To get a zero in the top right corner, right? So this will remain a one, this then becomes a zero. Our bottom row stays the same. Oh, that's a, yeah. One, two over three, two over three. Our negative one, we have negative one plus one over three. And here we have zero plus half of two over three, so we just have one over three. Okay, and so we've gotten the left side to look like the identity matrix, so the right side now, that is our inverse, right? So S inverse is equal to, okay, uh, negative three thirds, that's negative one, negative three thirds plus one third is negative two thirds. One third, two thirds, and two thirds, right? So now we have S inverse. Okay. So S D S inverse is equal to negative one, one, one over two, one, multiplied by D, negative one and five, multiplied by S inverse, negative two over three, one over three, two over three, two over three. Okay, and just to show that this does in fact equal A, we will do that calculation. So equals, uh, let's do S times D first. So we have one on the top, right? Negative one times one, and the other part is zero. And beside it, we have zero plus half of five, right? five over two. On the bottom, we have one times negative one plus zero, and beside it, we have one times zero plus one times five, and that's going to be equal to S inverse. two over three, two over three, okay? And then we have the next part. So this will be a bit of a longer calculation. So we have in the first section here, we have negative two over three plus five over three, okay, because five halves plus two thirds, the two cancels out. Beside it, we have one over three plus 
5 over 3, right? 5 halves times 2 thirds, the 2's cancel out. Underneath, we have negative 1 times negative 2 over 3, so we have 2 over 3, plus 5 times 2 thirds. And beside it, we have a negative 1 over 3, multiplied by, or plus 5 multiplied by 2 thirds. So, simplifying that, we have, okay, 5 thirds minus 2 thirds is 3 thirds. Uh, 1 third plus 5 thirds is 6 thirds. 2 thirds, this is 5 times 2, so it's 10 thirds. 2 thirds plus 10 thirds is 12 thirds. And again, 5 times 2 is 10. 10 thirds minus 1 third is 9. Thirds. And so very elegantly, we have 1, 2, 4, and 3, which of course is equal to A, right? If you recall, A is 1, 2, 4, and 3. So we checked, we did actually find the correct diagonalization, okay? And so now, well, things become much easier when we say you have to calculate A to the power of 100. Okay, what's that equal to? Well, a to the power of 100 is going to be s times d to the power of 100 multiplied by s inverse, okay, as shown above, okay? Many s's and s inverses will just multiply to the identity matrix, and so we don't have to raise them to any exponent, okay? So we can calculate this. Our s was negative 1, 1, 1 over 2. 1. Our d was negative 1, 5 along the diagonal. That's being raised to the power of 100. And our s inverse was negative 2 thirds, 1 third, and then positive 2 thirds in the bottom. Negative 2 thirds, 1 third, and positive 2 thirds in the bottom. So, so this is the calculation we have to do, which is a much simpler calculation. Okay. So I'm going to factor a one third out from the, the third matrix here, S inverse, to make our life easier. So we have negative one, negative one over two, one, one. Um, actually, that is a, that's a positive one over two. Okay, raising the diagonal matrix to an exponent. Well, we just have negative 1 to the exponent 100. 0 stays 0 here, and we have 5 to the exponent 100. And then we have, we factored out the 1 third, so it's just negative 2, 1, 2, and 2. Okay, so working through this, we can keep the one third there. Negative one, one over two, one, one. Negative one to the power of 100 would be a positive one because 100 is a even exponent. Five to the power of 100, we'll just keep it like that to make life easier. Okay, so for the first two matrices, okay, we have negative one times one plus zero, so that's negative one. And beside it, we have zero plus one half of five to the power of 100. On the bottom, we have one times one plus zero. And then we have zero plus five to the power of 100. And that is multiplied by negative 2, 1, 2, 2. Okay, continuing on, we now have negative 1 times negative 2, which is 2, plus, and we have 5 over 100 divided, uh, 5 to the power of 100 divided by 2 times 2, so that's just going to be 5 to the power of 100. Beside it, we have negative one 
times one, so negative one, and then plus again, five to the power of 100 over two times two. Okay. Underneath we have one times negative two, negative two, plus two times five to the power of 100, and beside it we have one times one, which is one, again plus two times five to the power of 100. And that's it. Okay. That's uh, that's our answer, right? And if, if we want, we can calculate, just take a calculator, plug in five to the power of 100, and, and you'll get your answer, okay? And if we had some other exponent other than 100, well, it's it's just as easy to go through this process and and get the answer, right? And if, if it was an exponent less than 100, well, then, then it would be simpler to get exact numbers here, okay? And, and that's that, okay? That's uh, how you do, how you do diagonalization of a matrix, okay, with a two by two example, and how you can use that to raise the matrix to an exponent, okay? So for example, Okay, let's say we had a to the power of four instead. Well, then we would end up with one over three, and then it would be two plus five to the power of four, negative one plus five to the power of four, negative two plus two times five to the power of four, and then one plus two times five to the power of four, right? And four is also an even exponent, so that negative one above raised to that power still gives us a positive one on top of our diagonal matrix, okay? That positive one right here, okay? So we can calculate what this is, okay? Two plus five to the power of four is 627. Negative one plus five to the power of four is 624. Right, just three less than that. Okay. Negative two times two uh, sorry, negative two plus two times five to the power of four is 1,248. And one plus two times five to the power of four is 1,251. Okay. And if we divide all of those by three, we have 627 divided by three is 209. 624 divided by three is 208, just one less than that. 1248 divided by three is 416, and 1251 divided by three is 417. Okay, and that's it. That's a to the power of four, right? Now that was much easier than if we had to do one, two, four, three, times one, two, four, three, times one, two, four, three, times one, two, four, three, that would be a long matrix multiplication. Something like this is much faster. So, I hope you'll find that useful, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.